Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Candace Christopher and in today's video, we will be doing another books and beauty segment. Anyone who has watched any previous videos know that this is actually only the second one. I really got a lot of good feedback on the last one I did. Please, if you haven't watched it yet and you're interested, go ahead and click somewhere. It's going to be somewhere up here. I'm going to try to do it. In today's video, we will be going over the book called The Beautiful Ones. I actually have this in my hand. For the most part, with the way that my house is, I don't have like a whole lot of room. So a lot of the books I have, I've bought off of Kindle and I buy ones that really, really have enjoyed and I buy the hardback are just paper copy. But I, for Mother's Day, went and bought myself a couple of books from Barnes and Noble and so here it is. This is the cover of it. It is called The Beautiful Ones and it is by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I know, I know I could put the accent on it but I'm gonna be butchering a lot, a lot of names today in this video. So first thing, if you have not read this book and you want to read this book, go on get, get on out of here and go read it and then come back and let's talk about it because this has spoilers, many a spoilers in the book because I will be talking about the premise of the book and what goes on in the book. So how many more times can I say book? <laughs> if you have read this and you are wanting to listen to some story time, if you are wanting to watch me just put on some makeup while I just blabber on about some books, or if you don't have time for books and you would just like to kind of listen to a story, then please keep watching. Okay, let's do some world building. Push this back. <laughs> do you like how it's all pearls? I'm trying to go with the vibe here. This is in France, I presume, in a city named Louisai, which, listen, I'm gonna be really honest here. There's a lot of names in this book. People, places, things that I am going to butcher the shit out of because they are French names. And as much as I may have looked up some of the definitions, like the way it sounds, uh, how it's pronounced. Pronouncenames.com. Gato. 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 It's, it's not good. It's not good, all right? So I'm very sorry, first and foremost. We're in this city named Loisai. Loisai. I'm just gonna put the names up here somewhere so you see what I'm talking about. So this is in French socialite. I'm trying to even think of like the time period uh, that we're kind of looking at. But if you have watched Bridgerton, it's very much like socialite debut of uh, younger women in the society that they are about to get married. There's like wedding season. The book centers around three different characters. So the chapters vary between three different characters and the three characters are Hector, Nina, and Valerie. So we start off in Hector's point of view. Hector, he has not been in Loisai for about 10 years. He is coming back because he has a one track mind of wanting to see an old flame that he has not seen in 10 years. He is a traveling performer basically. In this book, there is a splash of supernatural. This is like literally the only splash in it. So throughout the city, town, country, there are some people who are called talents, I believe. They have the talent to have particular powers, whether that be moving things with their mind or setting things aflame. They have certain powers and it's almost kind of looked down upon, or in my opinion, the way that they are treated in society. People who are socialites, well-to-do ladies and lords, they don't give a crap about whether you can move things with your mind. They care about what dresses you're wearing and who's talking to who, all of the gossip, you know the whole drill of that. So Hector comes back into town because he wants to see an old flame, someone who has burned and broken his heart, but he is still in love with her and he is set on seeing her again. And that is Miss Valerie Barlow. Barlow. Um, again, I'm gonna put the name up here. She is the socialite of Louis I. Everyone who's anyone knows about her, wants to be her, 
track her every move. She's always in the newspaper. She is, she's something really cool, I'm assuming. He is at this party because he wants to see her. He uh, has not seen her in forever and he is dead set on seeing her one last time. Just to kind of, I almost want to say like flaunt his success and show what he has accomplished during the time that they have not been together. So basically, Hector has made a living off of his talents with being able to move objects with his mind, and he is world-renowned, country-renowned, known for his shows, and he is well-to-do at this point. He's made a lot of money from it, and he wants to see Valerie, as I've said. So he's at this party, and he comes to find out that Valerie will not be there at the party because she has an illness or she's sick. She has a stomach ache or a headache and so she won't be there. So Hector in all of his woes decides to hold himself up in the library because woe is me. He's upset that he didn't get to see his girl. So he is reading up on some history at this party because he doesn't really want to be around these people but he did it because he wanted to see her. Well in comes our third character and her name is Nina. Her full name is Antonina, I believe. She just is having her first season as a debutante. So it's her first season in which she's going to go out and potentially meet men and get married. So she is from kind of, I, uh, the way that it's kind of put out there, she's from the countryside. She also has the talent of being able to move things with her mind. But instead of being world renowned like Hector is, a lot of people feel that she is just, she's weird and socially awkward and they call her the witch of old house. She is very blunt, very curious, and for a lady of upcoming high society, a lot of people turn their nose up at how she acts because she doesn't have the proper etiquette to kind of survive the game of socialites during this time period, right? So her whole life, as we kind of know with books like this or even just the time period, women only mattered to marry. That was their bargaining chip. That's all that they were meant to be was a wife, which is bullshit. Nina doesn't really grasp this. She comes from a very loving family out in the countryside. And you know, even though she's criticized quite a bit because she cannot control her powers, which causes her, the people to call her the witch of old house. She wants to go to the city. The reason she came for the marriage season wasn't even necessarily to get married, but to have a passionate love. She wanted to meet someone. She wanted to be swept off of her feet like all of the novels that she reads. She walks in to this library and sees Hector sitting there brooding and reading a history book. And she herself has gone to the library because she is trying to hide from someone who is asking her to dance. As we know during this time they have like those dance cards. Those women who are supposed to be trying to get married fill up their dance cards and it shows who they dance with during the night, I believe, just for more marriage prospects of her meeting all these new people. Well, she doesn't want that, and she is hiding from someone who is wanting to dance with her, so she runs into this library and happens upon Hector. Hector, realizing how quickly it can be poorly received that she is in a room with an unmarried man and she is unmarried, he is already trying to head out of there or get her to leave. Also, he doesn't want to talk to her because he is too busy reminiscing on Valerie's face and all the things that he misses about her. Nina is, in fact, a fan of Hector's and she starts talking to him about some of the research that has been done on him and his abilities. She doesn't mention that she has kind of the same capabilities that he does but she just explains that she knows who he is and he is as, as much as he doesn't really want to have the conversation with her he's somewhat intrigued because she's way different than most of the other lords and ladies, gentlemen and ladies. So they talk and then they leave the library before someone suspects something is amiss and he dance with, dances with her three separate dances because he kind of feels pity for her. He understands that she's trying to get out of doing this dance with this other guy. So they go, they do a couple of dances, which during that time is really, if you're dancing with a man multiple times, that's love, baby. She kind of takes it as he's interested in her and he could not give a shit less until 
His friend comes up to her, uh, comes up to Hector. He says, don't you dare go messing with her. I know what you're trying to do. And Hector's kind of confused. He doesn't realize who this girl is. And she, in fact, is the cousin-in-law to his beloved Valerie Berlou. She is a bear, um, Nina is a Berlou as well. Don't come for me, always. <laughs> Don't come for me. I don't know how to say these words. He He's aware that Valerie has been married. She's been married for quite some time. He has not obviously met the husband, but Nina is the cousin to Valerie's husband. So Hector decides to plan some mischief in getting close to Nina for his own selfish reasons. Mm -mm, no. Don't like that, Hector. Don't like that. These men, these dang men, I'm telling you. I have to get rid of them. I have to get rid of them. I'm just kidding. Ooh, we're gonna do a little minty look. I'm gonna fade back into, my face is gonna fade back into this. That's what's gonna happen. Nina, the next day, is going to go on a walk that she usually goes with Valerie, but Valerie is still feeling unwell and doesn't wanna go on a walk with her. She still has a headache. So Nina, gets to go by herself. Well, not by herself. She's allowed to go with like a lady in waiting or a maid. And she goes and takes a walk and feeds the ducks. Apparently it's important for a lady to be seen at the park and out and about and available, I guess. So some guy is like, oh, she's out at the park. Maybe I should just marry her. So she's out feeding the ducks. Could you guess who shows up? That's right. It's our pain in the butt guy, Hector. And Hector expresses that he really enjoyed his time with her the other night and that he would love to come have tea with her. Now, as you know, back in the day, a woman couldn't just go on a date with a guy. She couldn't go and have coffee with him or go and have tea in a public place. That's a big no-no. There has to be a chaperone. Usually that meant that the man who wanted to court the woman would come by and have tea while the family basically was in a corner watching them, which is creepy. He expresses that he wants to spend more time with her and he needs a friend and she's like, absolutely, you can come over. I'll see you later. And Hector is already rubbing his Grammy hands together because he's like, <laughs> I'm going to be able to see my girl Valerie even though she's married. Valerie hears from the maid that Nina has gone and made plans without her permission for a man to come and visit for tea. Valerie is ticked off. So she has been elected to basically be Nina's ward, which she is not down for. She feels that she does not have time to train a nitwit to become a socialite. She feels that Nina is doomed and is ignorant and is just a waste of time. But her husband, Gaton, Gaton, I don't know. I <laughs> We're just gonna power through it. He has a big spot in his heart for his family and he wants Nina to thrive and find someone to love. The reason Valerie is so bitter about this is because here comes the past between Hector and Valerie. When Valerie and Hector were younger, probably more around Nina's age, she and Hector found each other and fell in love and they fancied one another and they gave each other kisses and hand touch, which is very scandalous, very, very scandalous. You can't touch a man's hand without your glove or your hussy. Hector being of kind of low birth, decides that he is gonna go and make a living and a name for himself so he can come back with all this money so he can take Valerie and they can travel the world and he can make his family happy. As he leaves, their love grows cold. They don't talk as much because uh, they're writing letters to one another. Valerie's family, which at this point are in a copious amount of debt because, well, I, I can't actually remember, but they, are in a big amount of debt and their name is kind of being drug through the dirt. You know, they basically make Valerie the front lineman and they send her off to war being to find a husband. And she is forced into her marriage with Gitan. Gitan. Alright. And so she's resentful. She didn't want to do this, but she ends up writing Hector a letter saying, I don't want to be with you. I'm going to be married to someone else. Have a nice life. And she takes the ring because her and Hector were engaged on the low, which is also scandalous. She ends up taking the ring that has like this pretty pearl, but it's kind of a cheap ring. She ends up putting it in the bottom of her jewelry box and she brings it out to contemplate life. But she goes on and decides that money and her family are more important. 
fast forward, she's not getting all this money in the world for her family from her husband. And so she is bitter by it because he loves his family, but he doesn't love her family. And she feels that everything in the world is deserved to her for her sacrifices. So she does not want to spend her time taking care of her husband's spoiled, over-the-top country bumpkin cousin. She pretty much tells Nina that she needs to go with one of the men that Valerie wanted to set her up with. Now, Valerie at this point, like, controls every single thing that Nina does, like how Nina dresses, which basically she dresses her just like Valerie does, and they don't, they're not the same person. They're basically the opposite. Valerie is making Nina a little version of herself, while Nina doesn't want that at all. Nina is still defiant, and she's like, I think Hector, um, him, I don't know, I can't remember his last name, and his last name is also another word that I'm just gonna embarrass myself in pronouncing. So she men mentions Hector, and Valerie <gasps> freaks out and is like, okay, well, I guess he can come. I guess we can have him for, for tea. I'll make this as an exception. And inside, she's freaking out because she is about to see this man that she dumped years and years ago, but still kind of has feelings for, tells herself that been, she knows that Hector has been in town from what other people have said, and she is about to bring him to right to her doorstep, and she's unsure whether this is a good idea or not, but she, you know, common sense isn't really a thing in these books, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's not, it's not common sense that drives them, it's feelings. Hector comes by, he brings Nina some lilies, which lilies during this time are considered friendship and innocence. Valerie being the big rose person, or she, like she's all about her rose garden and she has like this little sanctuary in a greenhouse. She knows that immediately that Hector is using Nina to get to her. She doesn't really care about Nina, but she definitely is upset that Hector is even trying to play games about this. So during this entire tea time, Nina is not aware of it, but Hector and Valerie are having this whole little tension thing in which they're trying to have a normal conversation while under the pretense of knowing that there's a lot of other things going on. After he's, he's getting ready to leave and he asks to see Hector and Valerie again, and he invites them to one of his shows, which Nina enthusiastically really wants to go to, him and Valerie have a conversation right at the door where she's like, I can't believe that you're here in my household disrespecting me. But at the same time of her cruelty, she expresses that she still cares for him and will go see his show. Cause that's, that's what I'm saying. We like messy, we like messy drama and this is full of it. Nina and Valerie go to the show and Nina is in awe of Hector. She really like just the concept that she he is allowed to kind of do whatever he wants as a man and no one, you know, he's so good with his talent and she literally can't control hers at all. She thinks that he is so cool and Hector, although he finds Nina intriguing and has good conversation with her. He is all about his married, his married girl, Valerie, you know? So this happens a couple of times. Hector comes over quite a bit. Valerie and Hector act like they don't know each other while there's all this tension. And sometimes they share words and sometimes they don't. And Nina is oblivious and is now falling for Hector because she thinks that he is such a gentleman and such a great guy because he's always attentive, always brings her flowers and he is just, he's the man for her. In kind of the middle of this, she goes and sneaks off to Hector's apartment, which is a big no-no, but she asks him if he can teach her how to control her powers. And she's like, I really don't wanna embarrass anyone anymore because at this point, her emotions get the best of her and it ends up embarrassing a lot of, well, by a lot of people, I mean it embarrasses like Valerie, all of the people that she's around because it's it's really looked down upon to move things with your mind. Hector agrees, kind of teaches her some stuff. I believe at this time, she mentions that since summer is about to come around the corner, that they are going to go back to Old House, which is where she is from. And they are going, they stay the summers there because it's a lot cooler and she invites him to come and stay. He mentions that he is going on a journey to his friend's wedding, I believe. So she basically kind of pushes him into the spot where she's like, okay, well, on your way, bring your friends, come spend a couple days with me and my family. He eventually agrees because again, he's driven by the concept that 
he will be able to see Valerie once again. They go down to Old House and at this point Valerie is not having a good time. She increasingly is becoming more and more upset that Hector is still parading around kind of like just this fake thing even though she loves the fact that he's obsessed with her she is not happy with the fact that he gives any attention to Nina. Going to Old House just worsens it because She's not a country bumpkin, she's a socialite, everyone loves her, but at Old House, everyone loves Nina because it's all of Nina's close family, they love her personality. Basically, Valerie is just a very jealous person during this time. She feels that she can't live under the same roof with Hector staying here and Nina being around, just being incessant, and so she is at her wit's end. So Hector comes and lo and behold, Hector and Valerie can't really have these moments to themselves because there's over like, 12 or 15 people in the household. During this time, Hector teaches Nina to be able to control her powers. Hector helps her out every evening after dinner and all of the family sits and watches with awe because they think it's so cool that she's able to do something and that Hector, being the loving guy that he is, is helping out. And Valerie is disgusted by this and she makes it very known in front of everyone. She says, well, people are definitely gonna think you're the witch of old house now, which hurts Nina because Nina has been bullied for quite some time. She wants to be liked for who she is. So Hector, surprisingly, takes up for Nina. He thinks that it's cruel, that she's being cruel, and it's a no-no because Valerie is like, how dare you take her side? So she ends up leaving. She doesn't say anything, but she ends up leaving and going and brooding somewhere. And Hector realizes that he's done messed up with his girl, but he also knows that Nina doesn't deserve that type of treatment because Nina's not a bad girl. And he, as I've said at this moment, he's increasingly becoming attached to her in kind of a way where he is intrigued by her. He does like her and he, the more time he spends with her, the more that he realizes that she's not some plain, not pretty looking girl, that she is really cool. In fact, like she loves collecting bugs and she loves doing like nature research. And he is intrigued by that because it's almost, it's like the entire opposite of Valerie. They're having a picnic and it's getting ready to rain, I believe. And Hector is in his woes because he goes and tries to talk to Valerie and Valerie's basically like, go with your new girl, get out of here. I don't want nothing to do with you. You know, because they like being cruel to each other. I don't know if that is obvious at this point. I don't know how that's considered love, <laughs> but they play this game back and forth and Valerie is very cruel to him and then he will s say something kind of petty or you know, not nice, and it just goes and goes and goes. We're in a constant cycle of this. I think he goes, if I'm correct, he goes on this walk to once again cry in the rain, stare out into the distance, and it actually does begin raining. And he sees Nina at the watchtower, which no one really goes to the watchtower because it's kind of not safe to really go there anymore. And she sees him and she goes, come, come with me, let's get out of the rain and let's go and look at the view up there. They are looking out at this beautiful scenery and Nina ends up kind of just speaking from the heart and talking about things that are important to her and the beauty of life. And of course, Hector is really kind of captivated by this. And in return, they end up kissing. Hector is kind of like very passionate in this moment. He has a desire for Nina that he didn't realize but he also is appalled by himself that he has a desire for Nina that he didn't realize. He felt that no one could light his soul like Valerie did and he is a piece of crap for even, even doing this with Nina, especially because he knows that he's been using Nina this entire time. So he ends up bolting from the watchtower or the, the tower and Nina is kind of left alone, super confused. She tries to go after him, but it's raining really badly and she doesn't want to cause a scene herself. So she takes it a little differently as if he is just, he was like swept away in the moment and now he feels ashamed because he wasn't a gentleman. She basically is like, I'm going to confess my feelings in a letter and I'm gonna tell him because I felt that that felt right and I love him. So she goes and writes Hector a letter and sticks it right almost under his door in the middle of the night. And can you guess who sees 
her sticking the door the letter underneath there that's right it's our she devil valerie i also want to say this i forgot to mention this this is literally just like a smidgen before the kiss scene valerie or nina's family is very much like oh my god hector is your fiance and because Nina feels that their relationship is going well, that he will eventually propose. And Nina confronts, or Valerie confronts Nina and says, you're a fool, you don't need to be doing that, you need to find something else. Nina digs her heels in and is like, you don't know what you're talking about, bye. Valerie sees her placing this letter underneath the door and she is like, what the heck? So she goes and she opens the letter and she reads it. And the letter is a tad bit misconstrued, as we know, Nina doesn't really understand that letters getting into the wrong hands can make something seem different than what it is. And basically she tells Hector that she felt that their embrace, which Valerie takes as some sexy time. Nina is like, I hope you feel the same way that I do. My heart beats for you. I love you so much. Love Nina. <laughs> So Valerie sees this and she is, woo, she's very angry. And the next day she confronts Hector and she's like, hey man ho, huh? How dare you? And Hector is very confused by everything that is happening. He tells her that yes, they did kiss, but it didn't really mean anything. They go down their whole rabbit hole of the love that they had for one another. And he's like, I'm telling you, I have money now. You could be with me. We can run away. And Valerie is like, no, no one's going to have that power over me. You like, you love me. And that is super great. And you're obsessed with me and I love it but you are not gonna have the power over me for me to like love you in the same way. And this really floors Hector because here he has pined over this woman for over 10 years and he finally realizes just how cruel she really is. He felt that just because she was forced into a marriage that he could maybe find a way for her out of it. And he realizes that she wants to kind of be the victim and wants everyone to want her while she holds the power. Even though he's very hurt by this and they're fighting, he grabs her and he kisses her and Valerie kisses him back and they have this moment of passion and flurry that is immediately halted when some books drop because they're in the library and there in the doorway is Miss Nina and she has seen what has happened and she is heartbroken. She does not know that Hector didn't get the letter. She doesn't know that Valerie had the letter at this point. And so she is so heartbroken. She goes to run away and Hector runs after her. And Valerie kind of thinks this is funny, but is also crying. So you know, there's just a lot of emotions going around. Hector runs after Nina and Nina not being able to fully control her power, she blows up this whole hallway that's filled with stained glass mirrors. And she's like, I cannot believe you. I don't want anything to do with you. You were using me. And Hector doesn't have much to say about this because it's true and he's, but he's trying. He's like, I'm so sorry. I let me just talk to you about it. And Nina doesn't want that. Of course the family hears the exploding glass and is like, what's going on Nina, blah, blah, blah. Nina runs off because she wants to be in her room alone to fully grieve. Everything just goes kaput. Valerie takes upon this moment to find a way to not implicate herself in what she did. Hector ends up leaving. Again, woe is me. He's hurt about Valerie and he's hurt that he's hurt Nina and he goes and is a sad sack and he goes on to his party. Also, I didn't mention this, but um, Anthony and his brother Luke, who is like this little playboy guy, he, they were there too. So they basically were like, are you going to tell us what happened? And Hector is like, my lips are sealed while staring out the window, rain coming down. I'm sure I, I, that's what I imagined. Very sound of silence moment. Valerie tells everyone while Nina is holed up in her room that she professed her love not the same way like in the letter. She professed her love to Hector and Hector gently let her down because he just wanted friendship with her and he never intended to marry her, which is not a lie, but he takes it, she takes it upon uh, herself to create a narrative 
that instead of Nina getting upset because she caught Hector and Valerie doing the little smoochy smooch, she said, well, you know, she can't control her powers and she's really upset. And so she blew up the windows because Hector turned her down and she's just a child and we shouldn't chide her too much. We should really try our best to be nice, whatever. Nina, in this time, Valerie goes and, and confronts her and is like, listen, ho, Hector never loved you. He loved me. He's obsessed with me and you need to step off or I will tell everyone that you wrote this letter that makes you look like you've already lost your virginity and your whole world will be turned upside down and you will be shamed from your family and you will make a bad name for your family and everyone will hate you, basically. And, and nice um, French socialite talk. <laughs> Nina, during this time, she agrees with Valerie. She's like, okay, I don't wanna hurt anyone. Just get on, get out of here. And while she's working through her grief and trauma, she learns how to master her talent. So a year passes, around a year, and we're back almost at socialite season, so I guess maybe a little under a year. And Nina is back in Loisai, and instead of her being with her cousin and Valerie, she has decided this time that she is going to stay with her aunts, which they literally don't give a crap about where she goes, so she has a lot more freedom this time, and she runs with it. She is out and about, and she is running to some bookstores, and she runs into Luke, and as I just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Luke is Antony's younger playboy brother. He sees Nina and is like, how's it going, and starts flirting with her and asks her out on a date which she's kind of reluctant. She knows he's a playboy, but she's like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll see you again, I guess. Hector, through the grapevines, also at the same time finds out through Antony that Nina is back in town. And he, his heart is set erasing because he feels that he's really dropped the ball because he cares for her and he never apologized, never sent her a letter and he also missed her birthdays. Him being the now rich man that he is decides that he needs to send her a birthday present. So instead of jewels or dresses like all the other ladies want, he finds someone who can find, I'm trying, I don't know what the correct name of this is, but like bugs that have died but have been like procured and displayed. He finds one of those people and he asked for 20 beetles for every year that she's been born because her 20th birthday was the one that passed. So he starts sending these beetles over with just his name card and Nina is pissed. So she goes and she is ready to give him a piece of her mind. Hector realizes this moment that she has already grown. At this point, she's grown a lot more and she can control her emotions. He is like, I just wanna be friends with you. I understand I hurt you, but I, I just hope we can still be friends. And this hurts Nina. Nina, you know, is, she doesn't have a lot of friends and this is like her first love, but she agrees that they can work at being friends. Luke goes to Valerie around this same time and he wants to start a business proposition with Valerie. So Valerie owns a piece of land that cannot be sold, uh, which causes their family a lot of debt. And Luke comes to her and says, let me marry Nina and let me lease out the land because we'll be family and I will build a casino on this piece of land and make us tons of money and I'll be rich and you'll be more rich. And we see immediately that Luke only wants to start courting Nina for his own desires. What a surprise. Is this Hector number two or what? Valerie really considers this because as I had mentioned before, her family is not really getting what she wants from her husband. She's not, she feels that they are still getting the short end of the stick and they're not getting any money and she's really upset about this. So she plots with Luke and is like, you better make sure that Hector is not in the, in the way of this because she still cares for him and I don't want him anywhere near this, but I agree that you can, I'll talk to my husband about Nina getting married to you and we make money for my family. So she's all about this. She wants to make money. She's now finally feeling like she can get vengeance for the fact that 
her husband is not really apparently done what she wants him to do. During this time, Luke starts putting the pressure on Nina, is really like trying to court her. He says that he's gotten permission from the family to court her and she is very confused because she kind of wants to get over Hector. She doesn't want to be hurt again or used again. And, but she's not sure about Luke because she knows that he is a playboy. He is trying to prove his ways to her, but still terribly doing it because he is in fact a playboy and he doesn't care. A, he doesn't really care about her that much. Like not that he thinks that she wouldn't be a good wife. He just cares about other things. So they're at this party together and Nina is doing, she's using her talents and she's impressing people. And he comes up to her and he's like, don't be doing that. Don't. You don't need to use your um, talent anymore. You don't need to be doing parlor tricks for these people. You're better than that. And she's like, I like, I like doing that. I don't, you know, I want to do that. And he pretty much brushes her off during this time. Most of their conversations, anytime she brings up her feelings, he kind of dismisses it or tries to use his charms to distract her. And he ends up saying that he has to go talk business with these men and he ends up leaving her at this party. Well, could you guess who's also at this party? That's right, it's Hector. And so they see each other and she asks him to take, to escort her home because she doesn't know where Luke went. And also she just knows that Luke doesn't really care the way that he should. So he does escort her home and they're talking about how she's gotten better at, at her, her using her cards with her mind and they talked about the Beatles and they start forming a friendship again. Valerie, I believe, finds out that Hector was spotted with Nina and she is outraged. So she brings in Luke and is like, I thought you could do this. What are you doing? And he is very flustered because he is not a man who's been told no before and Nina doesn't give a crap about that. He's like, I'm, uh, don't worry. I will make sure that she falls for me. Don't you worry about that and she's like well you better because Hector is now you know trying to to become friends with her he's gonna take her away from you and Luke is he's kind of a fire has lit under his butt by this he is like I am going to make Nina marry me because I am going to make all this money and I am going to be such a good husband to her and Valerie thinks that's bullshit because she also just at this point I guess doesn't have any faith in men which <laughs> girl same I feel you she is obviously twisting a lot of things in Luke's ear because she wants you know a certain outcome Valerie decides to take matters into her own hands and she goes and visits Hector at his job and she is like don't play these games I know you're wanting to just see me you don't care about Nina you need to stop this. Hector is like, oh, actually, I uh, don't really have those feelings for you anymore. And Valerie is very shook by this. She's like, how can that be? I'm literally the love of your life. Not that she fully says this, but she is thrown back by Hector's distance to her. And so she's like, you need to stay from Nina. Nina's not yours. And she presses harder on Luke to try to win a marriage proposal while also talking to her husband about it as well because she's like, she finally brings out the letter to her husband and says, I just wanna let you know, Nina's trying to be a hoe out here and we need to get her locked into a marriage, otherwise people are gonna find out. And Gaetan, Gaetan, her husband, <laughs> agrees with this because he really cares about Nina and doesn't want her to get hurt. Well. Valerie tells Nina that she saw Hector and Hector professed his love to Valerie and that nothing has changed and she is stupid for trying to be friends with him and Nina is heartbroken by this. So she stops accepting time from Hector and she reluctantly decides that she's going to get in, engaged with Luke because she's like, well, I, he doesn't really love me, but I guess that's just the end of that. So they have an engagement party and Hector finds out about this and is beside himself. Nina comes and is like, I just want to let you know, I want us to be friends and it's fine, whatever you feel, but I'm getting engaged. And Hector kind of comes to terms that he really does have other feelings for Nina. At the engagement party, Nina is there almost like there's tons of people around and she feels suffocated. She feels that she's not making the right choice and Luke is not listening to her at all. She's, you know, she's just like, can we just go outside? Can we get a, a breath of fresh air? And he's like, I have things to do. I, Nina, 
goes outside and is really thinking to herself about how she's just kind of in this spot in which she doesn't feel heard or really loved and she decides upon seeing a beetle out there in the garden that she is going to get cold feet and bounce. She's going to run and so she runs Throw, takes her pearls off, throws them at this guy, and is like, please take me to, basically to Hector's apartment. And she gets there, and Hector is like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I love you. I've loved you this whole time, and I don't, I can't marry Luke. And he is reluctant on this because he's really worried how it'll all be perceived and how Nina will be perceived. And he's also a coward, which she calls him on. And she's like, you're a coward. You care about me. What are you going to do about it? And they decide to do the D. They decide to do some t sexy time. Yeah. They decide make love. And that's how they decided to do anything. And so next day, warring bells go off because Luke, soon to be bride, has run off. Valerie is, knows what's happened and she is like, you're gonna have to challenge, you're gonna have to challenge Hector to a duel and kill him. We have to kill him. There's literally no other option. <laughs> okay, girl, that's wild. Anyone who has watched Bridgerton kind of knows that this, there's a moment where two characters end up doing this and Antony goes and warns Hector and Luke shows up and challenges him and he agrees to much to Nina's dismay and is like, please don't do this. We'll just run away. Well, he ends up, they have another night together and he's like, I'll come back to you. She's very worried about all of this. And he was like, I will see you later, but this has to be done. And she is not happy about it. Wakes up to an empty apartment and he has gone to the duel, which he shows up at the duel and sees Valerie there and he knows that she has orchestrated a whole, like a whole lot of this because she is so upset that she, he is not obsessed with her anymore. And he just feels sad. He doesn't feel the same pain that he has felt upon seeing Valerie and other times, but he just knows that she is a better person and he's still gonna go through the duel. Right before they take the 20 paces and turn around and shoot each other, Nina shows up and stops the bullets with her mind. That's right, that's right. She stops the bullets with her mind and is like, you guys can't be doing this. You mean too much to me. And she talks to Luke and is like, I think that you're a better person than this. And he concedes. He's like, the, the duel has been met. I feel differently about it. I wanted to be a businessman, but I know I have a long way to go. Valerie, our girl Valerie is not happy with this. She's like, you know what? Luke won't shoot you, but I will. So she's like trying to go for the gun. They take the gun away from her. Or I don't know if she even gets to the gun. Gaton, Baton, um, he's there and he's like, what? Why are you acting this way? And she becomes cruel to her husband for the first time. The, the facade breaks. She is cruel and is like, my life is horrible. I hate my life and I hate you, Hector, for what you've done. And basically she tells Hector, if you say something right this second, I'll go with you. Like she doesn't fully say that because everyone speaks in riddles during that time, you know what I mean? But he's like, I don't have anything to say to you. Bye girl. She is embarrassed and she leaves with her husband. She's like, dang, well, here we go. Let's go, old husband. Nina, after this, Nina and Hector are engaged to be married. Everyone's happy. Everyone's like, I knew you're supposed to be together, son of a bitch. I'm so happy for you. Valerie's husband calls her out and he's like, I never knew that you were so bitter about all of this. I thought we were in love. And she's like, you're a fool for ever thinking that. I can't believe you wronged my family. All you care about is your country bumpkin family. And I hate you. And he's like, I'm going to send you away. I'm going to send you away. You'll still be my wife because we're not going to get divorce because we know how much that means to our family name but I'm done with you and you will never speak about my family again and she collapses on the floor and starts packing her things with her maids and takes the ring that Hector gave her and she boards a train at the very end of her part of the story she is so upset because Hector is not obsessed with her even anymore even though she basically explained that she had love for him but just not not a healthy sort of love and she takes the ring and throws it out the window and immediately regrets it sits down faces forward on the train and goes off into the sunset but not in a cheery fun way hector and nina get married at old house and they decide to go and travel all the places that hector went during his time when he was on traveling shows they're adventurous they love each other and they complete each other. Finn. 
that's French, right? So that is the story. That is how it ends. And I am not even done with this makeup look. Holy crap, what have I been doing? Okay, I went and finished my makeup off camera. I figured that'd be best. Otherwise, it'd be like another five minutes of me ranting and ram like raving about my opinions on the book. All in all, I thought that this book was, it was really nice. It's obviously refreshing. It does have a splash of the supernatural in there. I think just to create more of a, just a different style plot versus high society era. I think obviously the bottom line message is beauty isn't everything. That's not what really matters at the end of the day. I loved Nina's character. I personally, just being who I am, would probably never take Hector back, but that's just my vibes on it. And I just also know that it was a nice little romance and I, I ultimately did like a lot of the little scenes that happened between Hector and Nina. So I did think it was a good book. Let me know down below what you felt about it. I'm um, just listening to it. If you've read it, let me know what your thoughts in general about the whole book was, who your favorite character was. Did you feel that Valerie was really just an abused character or was she just playing victim? I think that that is not an easy answer, but I do think that that is kind of a gray area. And I think ultimately she just allowed herself to become super cruel just because she knew that she was pretty and can get what she wanted. I am so happy if you made it this far. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for your love for the last video I did. I will definitely be making a lot more videos like this. It's so much fun to do. And I'm reading these books anyways, so might as well be talking about them with you guys. If you have a book in mind, please don't forget to comment down below. I would love, 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 love to add more to my list. I'm always adding things on, it's growing, and I would love to talk about them here with you. Please, before you leave, do not forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for everyone who is subscribed. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.